Hello, Lisa here. Welcome back to my channel or welcome if this is your first time here. And today we are going to be doing a full walkthrough first impressions video all about the Flow Tarot by Rachel Torta. Um, this one became uh, something I was aware of Somebody told me about this deck actually a long time ago. I just can't remember who, and I'm so, so sorry. Um, but to whoever it was, they were like, Lisa, you have to see this deck. And I went and looked at it and I was like, nah. <laughs> and then, and then fast forward many months and uh, I saw this over on the Waves of Your Soul. So I will link that channel down below so you can go check it out. Her videos are incredible. I love her channel. She's so soothing for me to watch. I tune into pretty much all of her videos. Um, so check that out. And she was ranking her top 10 um, decks from 2022 and she had this one at number one and I went and looked at it again which I probably should not have done and then here we are I have it now so the flow tarot is a deck that I bought I bought from the creator directly on Etsy so I will have a link to it down below so you can check it out it is an entirely ocean themed photographic tarot deck I've of course put mine in a Peggy bag, but it does come with a bag, uh, which I showed in my recent deck roundup. I forgot to get it for this video, but I freaking love the backings of these cards. Hello with the ocean. Oh, as you can see, I'm very thematically appropriate here with my mega ocean beach cloth that I love so much. Um, but yeah, it's really, these are beautiful. It is on this really luxurious feeling um, cardstock. It did not come with a box. Like I said, it comes with a hand stamped, I'm assuming, um, linen uh, drawstring bag. And uh, it comes with a guidebook, which um, feels, seems lovely as well. I've done some peeking, as you can tell, because my cover doesn't want to stay up. So I've definitely taken a little bit of a look at this and flipped through the cards myself already. So this is more like a second impressions, I guess, than a first. Some things to know about this deck because it is photographic and it's all based on water and ocean and things connected to the water and ocean, water, water, lakes, rivers, etc. Um, because it's all based on water, it's obviously a very water heavy, <laughs> heavy deck. It's not going to be elementally balanced in that way. But the way that the creator has gone about this as far as the suits is that you have your major arcana cards and then for the minors you have um, an alliteration which is basically where the first word or the first letter of the name of the suit matches the first letter of its traditional suit. So um, we have snow for swords, so S, snow for swords. We have pawns for pentacles. We have clouds for cups and waves for wands. And dynamically, if you think about each of these, they really do work. When I first saw this deck, I was like, why are clouds not air? And I think that might have been my immediate deal breaker. But the way that the creator describes clouds um, as being a representation of the cup suit is she talks about the fact that clouds contain their element. They're, they're a container for water naturally. And then they let that water go in different scenarios, right? Like obviously rain and such. So they do represent a container, a natural container for water. Um, I would probably have gone almost like ponds for cups, but then ponds really represent that idea of groundwater. So ponds for pentacles does make sense. And then we have snow for swords, which I think that just works generally. It's kind of biting and cold. Um, and then we have waves, which are very dynamic and action-y for the wands. So I think that the suits energetically make sense, as well as the fact that They've got that alliteration, which will make them much easier to remember, which I think is pretty smart on the part of Rachel Torta. So thank you, Rachel, for doing that. Um, because whenever we rename the suits, there is that opportunity for it, there to be mix-ups. The other thing that I really like uh, about how this deck is set up is you do have a simple banner on the bottom of every single card, which has the title of the card and a key phrase or keyword, which I think is an excellent way to handle a deck like this that's going to stray so far from the traditional imagery we're, we're used to looking at, particularly in a photographic deck where we're not gonna be seeing people and interactions. And I just think that's just really well done. So all of my pre-babblings aside, the cardstock is lovely. It's a uh, satin, so you can see it will catch a little bit of light. Um, it's really smooth. It feels nice and sturdy. If I were to make a wild guess, um, just by feel, this feels like a 330 GSM with a good core, like maybe even a black core. Um, so I would suspect black core 330 GSM, but I have not confirmed that at all. I haven't contacted the creator. I have no idea, but that's what it feels like. It feels luscious um, and like it's gonna shuffle really nicely. It feels um, slippery, but not slidey, if that makes sense. So it's gonna move, but it's not so slippery that it feels like it's gonna be a problem. It does move a bit though. Um, and it's not pure matte. So I think that pro probably covers all of the main points I would want to go over. All right. Now, I said it's not slidey, and then look what it's doing. So maybe it's slidier than I was giving it credit for. But anyway, all right, let's get into the card by card. So I'm gonna zoom in just a bit. 
and we're gonna start off with the fool and the key phrase here is a single drop. What I love about this is it feels as though that that phrase, the world could be contained within a single drop. At least that's what pops into my head. Is that a phrase? Did I just make that up? I don't think I just made that up. But anyway, I love how we see the actual world sort of reflected. So it feels like what happens, that, that moment of potential, right? Like what's contained within that potential, which I think really works for the fool. The magician is the endless waters. And I love the ripple effect here because to me, magicians are about manifesting. And this idea that like a single stone throw can manifest outward in a bigger effect than what was maybe immediately drawn upon. I think that's pretty awesome actually. The high priestess is the gift. And here we get this like sort of um, light pouring through the clouds, sort of shining down. So that cloud uh, connection here brings us back to that element of water, which again, the whole deck is water, but clouds being the cups suit in this particular deck. So I like that we have that connection to clouds for the high priestess, that connection to water. I like that the gift feels like channeling or drawing down light or energy from above. That's what this image feels like. So I think that really works. For the Empress, we have the abundant source. I love this, this is so luscious. Um, this idea of sort of natural spring and the way that it nurtures life around it. I just think that's perfect. The emperor is the vast network. This is very interesting, but it's true. The way that we have existing sort of shapes and structures that connect to come together into a larger body of water. At least that's where my brain goes. I just think that's really neat. Um, this might be one I'll set aside to look up in the guidebook after. So I'm gonna do that actually. The Hierophant, the channel. So here's a different sort of channeling energy than we had with the High Priestess, but they're very visually similar. Both of these are actually drawing on something from above, but in the case of the channel, it's coming from, or the Hierophant, it's coming from an existing source, like a land source. So it's got more um, stability and existing structure behind it. And this waterfall has been flowing exactly like this for probably hundreds and hundreds of years, if not longer. Whereas the High Priestess is pulling from the cloud. It's a much more transient kind of connection. Um, at least that's how I feel about it. Maybe I'm just reading more into it because I'm excited because it's a watery deck and I love water. Um, here we have the lovers. This is the same image we see on the cover of the guidebook. I love the idea of where the sand meets the sea and the surf sort of creates that blending of the two or that feeling of the blending of the two. I think that's a beautiful image. The chariot is the flow and it's this water rushing over these stones and sort of overcoming any obstacles in its path. Like it's finding its way. I think that's great. This is such a gorgeous image. And for all I know, these you guys, these, these very likely are all public domain images. I have no idea. I have no idea. Or maybe Rachel's a photographer. I, I have not dug into it at all. I just think it's beautiful. For strength, the quiet power, I like how it's all within the wildness of this cave structure. This like water is still finding its way to get around these nooks and crannies. It's just beautiful. And it feels very fiery compared to a lot of the other cards, which I think is, is very clever. The hermit is the unseen connection. This is so freaking beautiful. Um, we have the roots of these trees sort of drinking from this water that runs along the ground here. Oh, it's magical. The wheel is the cycle of regeneration and we have lava pouring down into the sea. So you have that meeting of fire and water, which is interesting for the wheel actually, but it does speak to the sort of cycle of destruction and creation, which lava can represent, um, the ways in which literal islands or mountains can form. Justice is the inner reflection, which I think is a beautiful way to depict this card. It's a gorgeous image. This is so fun. I love this one. This is the floating, the floating one, and it's between worlds. And it's a frog that is in the water and just it's like head is peeking out and it's perfectly reflected. And it is suspended between sky and sea in a way, which I think is a really great way to depict this card. Um, darkness is standing in for the devil, right? No, that would be death. Death is the transformation. And we have crystal, a crystal cave here. This is another one I think I'll set aside and take a peek at. Balance, the harsh extremes. And we have desert and storm for temperance, which I think is so interesting. It's like we have the dry desert and then the storm, which while intense is going to come and bring balance to that area, bringing water. And then the devil is the drought. I mean, what better depiction for the devil in a card made of sea is to have a complete absence of water to feel stuck in that state. The tower is the looming storm. Yes. Just, just yes. I mean, this is what better way to depict that card. I do kind of wish that the lightning strike was a little higher up somehow in the image so that it would draw the eye more because we see there's a lightning strike already happening, but there's also all the lightning happening in the sky too. So it's kind of a artistic choice, I guess, which one to frame in the card. 
This is so freaking stunning. I love this image. Um, the stars, the illuminated path, it literally looks as though starlight is reflected in the sea below and is literally creating a starlit path to walk. So you get that idea of the hope and renewal of the star, but you also get that idea of navigation and finding your way, which I love. The moon is the gentle guide. So we have this very like almost bioluminescent sort of lit path here. And then the moon instead is like, okay, come, come towards the water, come towards the, the deep, you know, explore the depths of your, of your self. I love that. And the sun is the radiant companion shining through this wave. Glorious. Judgment is the deep unknown. Oh, these are so beautiful. And I don't think I have actually any, I'm just thinking if I have any other photography decks, like photographic decks. I have, the closest would probably be my um, Majestic Earth Tarot, which is a landscape art deck, but it's painted. It's not photos. Do I have any other photo decks? I probably do, but I can't think of any right now. I mean, other than collage, like the, the, uh, <clears throat> the Voyager Tarot is collage. There's photos there. That might be the only other one that has any photos. I don't think I have any that are just like a photo per card. Um, so the fact that this is ocean, sucked me right in. Then we have the world. You are complete. I love this because we have earth, we have water, we have air, and we have the fire of the sunset. I think everything is present in a really beautiful, like layered balance. It feels very even and aligned. Really nice choice for this card. And then we're into the wand suit, which is the waves here, ace of waves. So we have the movement and dyna dynamic energy of waves to represent the suit of fire. So we have a ripple of energy, which is such a beautiful theme for the ace of wands. It's that murmur, it's that beginning, it's that inspiration. The two of waves is a surging power. So now we've got the impetus, right? Like, so we had this sort of inspiration. Now we have the impetus. It's an interesting word, but that's the one that came to mind. And then in the three of waves, dive deeper. So we knew we wanted to go into the sea, right? And so now we're in there, we're exploring. So there's this idea of like beginning the journey, but we're still not in the deep water. It's still quite clear here. Love the sea turtle. And then the four is sanctuary among the reefs. That's beautiful. The five is flow around adversity. So this is a shark and there's all of these fish sort of in its way and it's sort of carving its own path, which I think is a really interesting depiction for the five of waves and works for me actually. The six of waves belong, it's a clownfish and it's anemones, oh my gosh. Hi Nemo, I'm just having a moment, it's fine. The seven of waves endure, we have a fossilized shell here and the idea of sort of riding the waves. Um, Interesting. That's one I'm going to set aside too because it's a different take on the seven. I mean, we do have to wait. Actually, maybe it's not. Let me think for a second. This is the one with like patience and timing. So that, oh wait, seven of wands though, where we're, and do, yeah, I want to look this one up because it almost makes me think of seven of uh, pentacles a little bit with the waiting and the time, but here it's endure. It's like seeing it through things that would wipe you out. I'm just curious how the guidebook's written on that, that one, but I think it's, it make, it's starting to already percolate and make sense. Here we have the eight of waves. We have synchronicity. I love how all these fish are lined up in a straight line, very reminiscent of the Rider Waite Smith, eight of wands, the nine of waves persevere. Yes. The stone sort of holding the line there against the crashing of the waves. And the 10 of waves is let's let go. So the 10 of wands is let go. Let go of some responsibility. This feels like when you're just so tired and you need respite. That's almost what this feels like to me. The page of waves, the page of wands, delight in adventure and it's dolphins. Perfection for the page of waves, I think, or the page of wands. The knight of waves is the orca, seek new horizons. This also really works well for me. There's a, there's a dynamic energy there too. Oh yes, the queen of waves, radiate harmony, and it's a jellyfish. Interesting, I see hers a little more wild than what I would picture a, gen a jellyfish as, right? Like I feel like they're more flowy. I'm gonna put this also to the side. King of waves, brave any depth, and it's a big whale. Gray whale, question mark? Um, now we're into the swords, so we have snow. Ace of snow is a crystallizing moment. I think that's a really interesting and poignant way to describe the ace of swords. Two of snow is the path. I mean, that's perfect. Like we have a choice to make, we have a path to follow. Three of snow locked in ice. This is freezing rain that has wrapped around this um, branch and has created a thick layer of ice all around it. It gives you that feeling of being locked up. The three of swords feels like that a lot of times. We're very locked up in our experience, our feelings. 
the four of snow except stillness when everything is blanketed and it's so so quiet in the snow if you've never experienced snow like this where it just there's something it does to the actual acoustics of where you are it actually creates this deeper silence i think that's a really beautiful depiction for the four of swords the five of snow or the five of swords is break away and it looks to me to be um ice ice caps or um uh Icebergs melting, maybe? I want to look up that one, too. I'm not going to necessarily read all of these um, on camera, but I definitely there's certain ones that I want to look up, look, look up and sort of get the feel for. Six of snow is when to fly. So this is the six of swords, when to leave. So this little bird is still here even though it's snowing. It's like, no, you got to get out of here now. It's time to go. I love this one because it's very optical illusion-y. It's like the snow was blowing, but it stuck to the sides of the trees, so it's very deceptive. It almost makes it look like this, this snow or excuse me, the trees are a different kind of tree, like they're maybe birch, but they're regular tall, dark colored trees that have just been coated in snow. So there's a optical illusion here, which works for me for the Seven of Swords. The Eight of Snow or Eight of Swords is stuck, and we have these like cracking up um, bits of ice, this feeling of like almost being um, separated. Like you can still maybe navigate out of that situation, but it's tricky. And the Nine of Snow is overwhelm, and this is just a giant glacier then we have the ten of snow perspective icicles so for the ten of swords they could fall it could be it could be dangerous for the page of swords or the page of snow we have emerge I love this this idea of like sort of just beginning to grow these are crocuses I believe coming up through the snow the idea of sort of pushing through that um, that cold or that stillness to be inquisitive. There's an inquisitive energy to the way that these come out so early. Oh, look it. Knight of Snow adapt, adapting to the conditions. That does work for the Knight of Swords, I think, for me. The Queen of Snow is clarity. I love this with the Northern Lights. And the King of Snow is vision. And we have a polar bear here. I'm really loving, there's something about this cardstock. I don't know if you can tell in this light. It's kind of catching the light almost as though there's like a frost or a sheen, almost like a slight metallic finish. Not on all the cards, but a lot of the ones with white or light colors. Where's the other one that I really spotted it in? Yeah, this one feels like it has it. It could just be the way that my light is reflecting off the white. But here, yeah, this kind of coloration, like here, I'm really seeing it. I don't know, maybe it's just me. Uh, now we're into the pawns, which are the pentacles. So we have the ace of pawns, one source. So a spring here, it's really beautiful. The two of pawns is many paths. So this is the two of pentacles. The idea of like the load is being spread out across multiple streams. The three of pawns, and this feels very earthy visually to all the greens and such. Um, this is blending energies. We have forest, mountain, pond, or lake. The Four of Pawns is smoothest route. Oh, interesting. So for the Four, that makes sense. For the Four of Pentacles, we're thinking about like sort of clinging to our comfort zone, holding tight to our known path, right? Like taking the, the path, taking the um, shortest route between two points. That's what this feels like, the most efficient way, um, as opposed to maybe the way that feels the best in that moment. The Five of Pawns is scarcity, and we again have sort of this drought condition, very reminiscent of the devil. The Six of Pawns or Six of Pentacles, sharing abundance. Oh, I love that. It's so pretty. I feel like I'm, I feel like in a lot of ways, I'm just thinking into the images and then I'm probably going to end up when I read this, taking it at face value with the keywords and not thinking too hard about it. Um, but I love taking a moment now to sort of think of the connections, if that makes any sense. Here we have the Seven of Pawns, embrace change. Just to me, this speaks to the ways that water carves out new paths and creates new shapes in the land, right? It's, it's dynamic. It's always moving. It's an interesting take on the Seven of Pentacles. Here we have the Eight of Pawns carved by time. This to me is a, is a, these kind of feel to me like they're illustrating similar concepts, but this of course is over a much longer, slower period of time. Oh, look at that, nine of pawns, safe harbors. It's a little dragonfly. And the 10 of pawns is oasis. You really get that feeling of time, the passage of time, generations, legacy. That makes sense for me with this image. 
Oh, look, it's an otter. So this is the Page of Pawns, Boundless Curiosity for the Page of Pentacles. Now, Boundless Curiosity is something I would typically associate with, say, the Page of Swords. But I can, again, I can take it at face value. For me, I would see more of like playful curiosity than like um, knowledge seeking curiosity, which I feel like is more quality of even Page of Pentacles over, oh wait, hold on, Lisa. <laughs> Did you hear what I just said? <laughs> So yes, this actually does make sense. Um, I was thinking about how I tend to see the Page of Pentacles and the Page of Swords both as sort of inquisitive sorts, with both of them wanting to build on their skills. Um, so this is the, this suddenly connected. I forgot I was in the Pentacle suit for a second. That works. Um, the Knight of Pawns is the salmon swimming upstream, so we get against the flow. That's interesting. It speaks to me of the dedication and determination of the Knight of Pentacles. I love this little froggy. I had, there was a time, uh, this was a long time ago, when I had a, I think they were called white dumpy frogs. They were really sweet. Um, I had one as a pet and it would hang out with me and on my apartment wall. It was fun. He was super cute. Anyways, Queen of Pawns is resourceful. Um, that's a keyword I typically use actually for the page of pentacles, but it does make sense also for the queen and it does work for me here. And then the King of Pawns interconnected and we have this vast sort of system of interconnected pawn or streams and pawns. So I like that. That's pretty. All right, so now we're into the cup suit. So Ace of Clouds is overflowing. I love that we're, we've already got a body of water and the rain is adding to it. It gives you that feeling of fullness, which I look for in an Ace of Cups, so I like that. The Two of Clouds or the Two of Cups is shared space and we literally have the moon and the sun occupying the sky at the same time, which is such a stunning image. I'm not sure if this is the kind of thing that's Photoshopped, y'all. I would never know how to tell, but I think it's pretty cool nonetheless. We have the three of clouds, which is saturate. So we have three different uh, lotuses here. There's technically a fourth one sort of there, but there's three lotuses sort of dominating the image and kind of contributing to their energy in this little space like that. The four of clouds, we have a cloud burst. We have waiting for rains. The cloud burst is back here and we're waiting for it over this field here. So it's like this, like, oh, it's almost, you know, it's like that, that element of I'm want the, I want the water here where I am right now. There's like a listless energy or a, um, dreaming energy to that. And then we have the five of clouds or the five of cups, which is blanketed. And this has got that sort of dreary foggy feeling, which fog for the five of cups really works for me as a, as an association. This is so pretty. The six of clouds is wonder. What even am I looking at? I mean, just the way the light's reflecting off those particular clouds is incredible. Wonder is a wonderful keyword for that. Oh, wonderful. Wonder is wonderful y'all. And then the seven of clouds, distant focus. We've got a halo around the sun. Um, this feels a little bit dreamy and otherworldly, which does work for the seven of cups for me. And then for the eight of cups or eight of clouds, we have changed direction and the geese are flying away for the winter. Nine of cups or nine of clouds after the storm. I think this is so beautiful and it speaks to the peace and contentment and the renewal and the full up feeling we have in an area that needed the water, right? The storm has passed and it's just like, oh, like everybody just breathes better. And the 10 of clouds, of course, we needed to have a rainbow for connection. The page of clouds rise above. So it's a bird riding in the thermals, I would assume. So there's like a floaty dreamy quality to that, which does make sense for me for the page. Another cloud burst in the nine of clouds. It literally says bursting. That's amazing. Um, the knight of cups is very like in their feels, right? And chasing their feels. So I like that. And then we have the queen of cups or queen of clouds, compassion. I love the daisy with the dew. That's beautiful. Turning its face to the sun. And this is the card that when I showed this in my recent deck roundup, this is one that I feel like depending on where you live in the world could be weird for you. Um, but it's the king of clouds and it's spiraling renewal and it's a hurricane, like a satellite image of a hurricane. And like, I think I, I understand what they're going for and I've read the guidebook image and it, it's fine for me because I don't live in an area that gets affected negatively by hurricanes. But this is the card that would give me pause reading for others with this deck. We'll see how it works out. But um, if you uh, live in a hurricane region, I've heard different takes from different folks. I've got a couple of friends that live in hurricane region, region right? And one, one of my friends who lives in that kind of part of the world was like, oh, that's so cool. And the other one was like, I don't know about that, man, <laughs> because they are such forces of destruction. And a lot of forces of destruction do follow that destruction with opportunity for renewal, which I think is kind of the point based on what I read in the guidebook. But it is something that would give me pause for sure if I lived in an area like this. Like if I saw like earthquake as like spiral as like some kind of renewal card, I'd, I'd struggle a little, you know? So I, I guess I just kind of wanted to point that out in case anybody's like looking at this and considering getting it and like maybe, maybe just see how you feel about that. I didn't see any other cards that might present big issues for people. Like, so that's why I wanted to point that one out. 
All right, so I'm gonna set this stack aside. I wanna show you the guidebook and also look up a couple of these cards that I set aside to take a look at. So I have the Five of Snow Break Away, the Queen of Waves, I definitely wanna look up, uh, Radiate Harmony, the Seven of Waves for Endure, Darkness for the Transformation, this is the, the Death card, and the Emperor is the Vast Network. So I'm gonna take a look at a few of these, but let me just show you sort of the anatomy of the guidebook. So we have um, a full color guidebook here. It's beautifully printed. Um, I love this like little like washi tape like styling. It looks like a piece of paper post-it note on like a desktop background. So there's a bit here about um, her experience making the deck as well as about making a, a deck only about, a tarot deck only about water. Um, and she talks about the different suits and what they stand for. A little bit more about the deck. There's some spreads here. And then we get right into these gorgeous pages for the cards. So you have a full color image and a full page write up, including a little um, affirmation at the bottom. So for the Fool, it has its title, including its keyword from the card itself, the full write up. And then in this case for the Fool, it's my nature is to flow. So let's start with the Emperor and take a look at that one because I wanted to take a peek. So this one says my potential is unlimited, which definitely works. And it says, in a great roar of water, several streams converge in one spot to form a single mighty river. The water that moves through here is fast and visceral. It pounds over rocks and thunders down the mountainside. I love the way, the descriptive way that she writes. Um, in the life of a river, many, many streams will feed into it. Each one pushes it farther over rough terrain that it would not have been able to cover. And right there, I'm kind of feeling like this idea of like many streams coming into one mighty river speaks a lot to how um, the emperor as sort of a ruling force is has been supported and fed by those that he rules in a way. So that's an interesting take on the card. I'm sure it's going into more areas, but I wanted to kind of get a vibe so I can look at some others as well. So let's take a look at death next and see what I can gather from that. I love the way that this book is put together with these images. So you can really appreciate the, the artwork or the, 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 the photos. Photos are art. I don't know why I had to qualify that. But anyways, so for darkness, the deep transformation, it says I honor my changes. And it says water is timeless. It never dies, only transforms to another state. And boom, there I am, right? It suddenly makes sense. Um, all the water on earth is all the water there has ever been, but it doesn't always roll over the surface. Hidden beneath the landscape is a vast network of subterranean springs and aquifers, rivers and lakes. Above ground, time flickers endlessly from day to night, but slip into the hushed darkness below ground and time becomes irrelevant. Changing seasons hold no sway. The temperature is always the same. Water slowly filters into still mirror-like pools. Mineral formations rise and fall, and glittering crystals, little gems that seem perfectly created to catch the light, can only be formed after thousands of years in the solitude of these dark, undisturbed places. Oh, that's so beautiful. The darkness card holds the energy of transformation. Like water, your life is lived in cycles. Chapters open and close, and it goes on from there. That is beautiful. Oh my gosh. I love that. Okay, so that helped me there. And then we have Queen of Waves. I said I wasn't going to do all these on camera, but here I am. Oh, here's Seven of Waves. Let's do that one first. Endure. So this one is My Love is a Protective Shell. Ooh, interesting. So it speaks, is really focusing on the protectiveness, which makes so much sense for the Seven of Waves or Seven of Wands. We've got that protective energy. So already with just that affirmation, I'm good. I'm still gonna wanna read the rest when I work with this deck, but that gives me what I need for right now. And the Queen, Radiate Harmony, I am who I want to be. So she's focusing here, I think, on the flow of being yourself. Let's just see. And I love the confidence and dynamism of the Queen of Wands typically, so that would work for me. Yeah, there are perhaps no other ocean creatures so well suited to their watery environment as jellyfish. Older than the dinosaurs, jellyfish are 98% water from their bell top to their ruffled tentacles. Their bodies are perfectly shaped to glide through water. Uh, let's see, the Queen of Wands encourages you to live the life you love. You're being called to align with your most passionate, most creative self. You know who you are, you do things your own way, and you always have, and it goes on from there. So that really works. And finally, we have the Five of Snow. Breakaway. So this says, I break away to begin again. Even when frozen, water is still changing. The blue ice in this iceberg is some of the oldest on the planet. Originally from glaciers, blue ice can date back a million years or more, but even the oldest ice must still follow the water cycle. What is frozen will one day melt. When a huge chunk of glacier breaks off and plunges into the ocean, so that's what we're seeing depicted here, an iceberg is born. This dramatic beginning is necessary to start another cycle of change. So I break away to begin again is a beautiful analogy 
for the Five of Swords. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I am going to shuffle these cards real quick and fan them, although I can already tell they're gonna fan beautifully. Um, but yeah, this cardstock feels like it's got some resistance, but not so much that it's even a little bit uncomfortable to shuffle. It does have that slip. It smells, I know this is gonna make me sound like a total geek, but it does smell like a make playing cards or um, game crafter style deck. I don't know why. Something about the inkiness of it um, smells that way. Um, but it has that good resistance and it feels beautiful to shuffle. I'm excited to have a really watery deck, like an oceany deck that just feels like it brings me right into the magic and the energy of water. And this one is the first one that I feel like has really done that for me in the way that I want it to do. So that my friends, is the flow tarot thank you for coming along with me while i checked this one out i appreciate you and your company and your attention so so much thank you for watching and coming with me on the journey i would love to hear your thoughts on this deck in the uh, comments down below so please do drop a comment let me know your thoughts if you have this how have you been working with it has the fact that it's been all water and tarot is a system made up of all the elements has that been a barrier for you i would love to hear so let me know as always thank you all so so much for your support and for watching an extra extra big thank you goes out to my unicorn fam y'all are really the reason why I'm able to do as much as I'm able to do here and I appreciate your your support so 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 much so thank you all very much and until next time may your magic always shine from the inside out bye